Hi, my name is Jake Carreri. I'm here at the Millbrook Museum of Art to talk to you today about the Entombment of Christ by Luca Giordano. Giordano was born in October 1634 and died, sadly, in January of 1705. Giordano himself was one of the greatest Neapolitan painters of all time. Luca Giordano gained the nickname of Luca fa presto, literally translated to Luca, or quickly. This was due to the fact that Giordano painted a large altarpiece in a single day. The first painting of oil conducted by Giordano dates back to 1651, noted as Jose de Rivera. It was a portrait of Jose de Rivera, who will be mentioned again later. The Entombment of Christ details a tremendous amount of influences from the early Venetian time periods. The astonishing fact of the painting holds ground the fact that Giordano aged merely 20 years when he painted such a beauty. Many of Giordano's later paintings reflect his similarities to the Entombment of Christ. The Entombment of Christ itself came about to the Philbrook Museum of Art in 1961 as a gift from the Samuel H. Crest Foundation. It is unclear whom the patron of the painting may exist as, and is therefore thought that Giordano spent his idle time creating a masterpiece. Upon well, first glance, the painting leads one to immediately recognize the brilliant use of color, as well as value, light and darkness, and chiaroscuro fashion, related from the Renaissance. With Jesus' bare chest and midsection at the center of the light, quite an anomaly occurs in the mind. By this use of shading and contrast, the eyes are drawn to the darkened hues upon the clothing of the men carrying Jesus. But the shadows covering Jesus' deathly wounds create mystery within the painting. Towards the center of the painting, the intensity of color yields best resolution, while as the viewer's eyes wander farther from the figure of Jesus, the less intense picture surrounds. The second point of formality gathers with the point of perspective. Giordano uses neither foreshadowing nor linear perspective in his painting. Rather, he relies more on an atmospheric and scaled perspective, the body of Jesus being in perfect proportion, an incredible, incredibly detailed flexion of muscles of the men carrying Jesus. The feel is established for the three-dimensional space Jesus exists. Tomb of Christ as a whole demonstrates a focus on the mirror's perception of the painting, being quite common in the rock era. From an iconographic viewpoint, the Tomb of Christ remains extraordinary. The two men holding Jesus' body are Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus. Joseph was a very wealthy man, and being distraught by the crucifixion of Christ, donated his very own tomb and linen for the burial of the Messiah. And Nicodemus, rather the more prominent of the two figures, dwelt among the title of Pharisee in the Roman era. He grew rather fond of Jesus' teachings and later became a born again follower of Christ. The two portrayed in the painting have expressions of pain and agony on their faces, grimacing at the weight of Jesus and at the knowledge that their Messiah lay dead. Mary Magdalene detailed in the corner, more of a commentary on the layman, she was a follower of Christ in the very last breath. In the painting, she grips the bottommost portion of his heel with a fixed gaze that appears to be crying at the sight of Jesus. The light of Jesus' body reflects broken position he has then become. With a lean, muscular frame detailing the past his carpenter, Jesus' body curves inward from the pain. His figure appears to have been starved in recent days, making note of the very declaration Christ reflects a splendid hybrid of Venetian and Romanesque styles by the influence of Jose de Rivera and his friend Titian, as well as Andrea Pozo. Jose de Rivera, the Counter Reformation on Andrea de Pozo, the rock art, will be the discussion. Jose de Rivera constructed the Holy Trinity in 1635 during the Counter Reformation era. His particular portrayal of Jesus consisted of disproportionate surrounding figures of children signifying much of the theology of Christ for his followers to have faith like that of children. Andrea Pozzo's painting of the ceiling of the Church of St. Ignazio holds more to the tale of the Baroque era, one of which Giordano himself relates towards. This painting reflects the essence of life, vivid colors, action facts, and dozens of men and women replicating different activities, and a tremendous amount of detail. Truly a Baroque masterpiece. Now, Titian, who also painted a similar painting to the Entombment of Christ, incredibly similar vast, it can be taken as direct comparison to influencing Giordano. Though many pieces yielding the possibility of selection, the Entombment of Christ drew me most near because of its beautiful representation of such a somber moment in history. The color and vivid detail cry from the frame in which it is held. Giordano captures the image of Christ and the saddened spirits of his followers in the remaining corners of the image, unlike any other painting found in the Philbrook Museum of Art. Entombment of Christ proves just this. Art is from the mind and not from the computer program.